Morning. Leaving the gym again. Wonderful arm day. Man, got a crazy pump. Uh, doing this arm workout my friend David showed me. Basically, uh, it's on like the preacher curl machine. You start out with a pretty medium weight and do five reps. Then you go down in weight and do six. Go down and do seven, all the way up to ten, and then back down to the heavy weight, low reps. Uh, by the end of it, you're pushing pretty hard. I actually got a nosebleed, funny enough. Um, although I get nosebleeds pretty easily, so I don't know that it had anything to do with how hard I was pushing, but it's kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I sent a bunch of emails last night just following up on deals that I've been working on, You know, some stuff that I've seen sitting on the market for months and months, and reached back out to the brokers and actually got a bunch of responses this morning. Got a phone call at 10.30 on a, a couple deals that I, I sent offers on with the same broker. So maybe there's some opportunity there. He said one of them should be going under contract today, but uh, you never know. Sometimes stuff like that doesn't happen the way that you expect it to happen. Um, especially, you know, it's been sitting on the market for months and months. I think it has been under contract a few times. The offer I made... Uh, timeline wise isn't the most attractive to the seller but it'll get him out of the deal like as soon as next week uh, and managing it I know was an issue with him because he's out of state and it's not that big of a property so uh, we'll see if something like that works and this camera angle is terrible because I gotta open this gate and use my other hand and drive at the same time but uh, I'll let you know how that goes I'm gonna have a bunch of meetings today on like a bunch of multifamily deals, which is exciting. Like that's what I prefer. Multifamily, I feel like, is my language. Totally understand it. Uh, love to talk about it, and I can kind of, you know, I'm not an expert. There's people way smarter than me, but a lot of times, like just you know, off of looking at the deal, I can kind of make sense of a deal in my head, at least on a preliminary level. Um, to pretty quickly sift through opportunities, I would say. Um, so these ones are pretty decent, and uh, they're just listed really high. So that's why they're not selling. I mean, interest rates are so high. There was one, you know, I sent an email to the broker. They even came down on the price. I got an email from him that there was a price adjustment, and I ran the numbers with current interest rates. Our monthly payment would be more than the income. <laughs> you just can't make sense of it. So I just asked him, I said, hey, how do you think this can work? Like I ran the numbers, and uh, our debt service is going to be more than the net income. Like the bank won't do that deal. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but if a property doesn't make enough money to pay the mortgage, the bank will just say no. <laughs> they they got to protect themselves too. It's not, you know, they won't just give you the money because you asked for it and you have good credit or because you put a down payment. Like they're going to underwrite it as well. So when I'm talking with brokers, you know, I'm looking at it from the perspective of the bank. And if the bank is going to say no, it is not going to cash flow for us. It's not going to be a great deal. But the other thing is, if the bank's going to say no, they're going to say no to everybody. So the, the deal's just not going to sell. So that's where we can kind of come in with a little bit more of a creative offer. Um, sometimes it makes sense to do a master lease, which is where we're just going to rent the whole property from the current owner. We'll give them one monthly payment, kind of makes it like a triple net property. And then, uh, yeah, we can sublease it to the other tenants. We'll take care of the management, taxes, insurance, all that stuff. And then it, it allows us to kind of build in our equity for an easier cash out at a later date. Uh, but a lot of these guys, they don't want to do it at a later date. They'd rather let the property sit on the market for a year and a half than to give us a year and a half to come in and do this strategy. So it's interesting. You, it's just, it just really depends on how you present it to them and uh, you know how much they trust you that you're going to fulfill it and it's actually going to be good for them. So catch you soon. Here in the office now, Colin stepped out for a phone call. Didn't want to bother him with the video, but we're work, working on some pretty cool deals. He's got a bunch of multifamily stuff and a hotel. Uh, I was talking to the broker this morning. He got all the info to Colin. Colin has a background in hotels. I don't really know anything about it, so... I sent it all to him. Uh, he analyzes it, knows the stuff, knows the language, knows the game. Um, and it sounds like we might go see it next week, which is cool. We haven't done a hotel before. I've never done a hotel. I know he's been involved in that. And uh, it's exciting. But 
I'm working on a couple multifamily deals. I've got a little calculator I made. If you ask really nicely, I might share it. Um, but it really shows us where we need to be at on the monthly payments, even if it's a creative offer or if we're just going traditional with the bank. Um, because there's certain coverages of the debt that the bank wants to see. You know, they want to see like at least 1.25 times <laughs> the uh, the net income is going to cover the debt, just to protect them. Like I've you know I've said before, if the bank isn't protected by the income, they're not going to do the deal. So we, if we're doing a deal without a bank, we kind of want to follow the same guidelines at least on a monthly basis. So because we're probably eventually going to have a bank involved. You know, depending on the terms, it could be three to five years from now. Maybe it's 30 years from now, 10 years from you know when we do a refinance, and we just want to make sure that we're kind of looking at it the same way they are, just to make sure that we can make sense of the offer. We're protected, so we know what is a good cash flow. And you know, if the property brings in a hundred thousand dollars a month, you're like, shoot, I'm good making two grand, but that's probably not a safe investment. Um, because two thousand dollars, you know, in certain contexts, can be a lot of money or not a lot of money at all, like nothing. So um, that's what I'm working on right now. I'm gonna let you know if anything exciting happens. I've got a call with another broker in about thirty minutes on a deal I've been working on since just before Thanksgiving. Keeps going under contract with other people, and they keep falling out of contract. I think I'm pretty confident we can do it. They're just they haven't accepted <laughs> what I'm offering. I do think it's a solution to their situation, but you know, a lot of sellers, especially if they list it with a broker, and I understand this, they want to get the most money they possibly can. Sometimes they're willing to hold on a few months to get that, you know, that buyer in there that's going to pay them the most money, but it doesn't always happen. You know, it is what it is. You just got to keep following up, and if you just be the voice of reason and be very confident in what you're offering and what you can provide to them, eventually it might work. Maybe it doesn't. But if not, uh, this broker is going to have other deals. Maybe the seller is going to have other deals we can look at further down the road, just because we're continuing the relationship. You know, it's a uh, real estate's a relationship game, and you just keep following up, keep having conversations, do good things, and uh, deals start coming eventually. You know, uh, this guy I'm talking to, he sent me two other things off market, different from the deal I initially reached out to him about. So those are other opportunities, and we're going to talk about those. I think the one on market. He's hoping is going to sell, and if it does, good for him. The seller's probably going to make the most money. The broker's probably going to make the most money. I hope that for him. But if it doesn't work, we could still be a solution. Um, but he's got other deals that are, you know, um, potential. So just keep having the conversations. Keep seeing how you can provide a solution, but also, kind of like I'm doing here with the underwriting, make sure we're protected. Like we're not just going to buy a deal to get someone out of a bad deal just because. Like we got to make some money. It's a business. Solid day today, uh, pretty much on the phone talking to brokers and other investors like all day, which is great. Talking about deals, sent out a couple offers. Uh, Colin sent out, I think, three offers on some multifamily deals, maybe more, because um, I was in the other room on the phone while he was on the phone for like the last several hours. Um, so who knows what he got done. Last I checked, he had three offers out. I sent one offer and then um, I'm working on another one, kind of following up something that I sent in months ago and the property is just still on the market. The broker connected me with a lender they're working with. The lender, you know, kind of, I, I got the opinion that he agreed with me and what the property is worth, uh, but he's going to send me a quote just so we can take a look at the interest rates and the loan products that they've got and find something that'll make sense for this deal. But I really think it's worth 2.1. Apparently they've gotten a lot of other offers in that same range, probably because what, that's what it's worth. Uh, but they're asking $2.8 million. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. Like the guy bought it for 2.1, put three, 400,000, let's call it 400,000 into it. So he's trying to sell it. His bottom number would be 2.6 million because he's in it for 2.5, but uh, I think it's worth 2.1. Unfortunately, like I, I tried to give him a solution where we can give him 2.65, and we just need to pay him $12,000 a month. The property doesn't really make much more than that as is, uh, so we'd be taking some risks there. But we, you know, we're going to put some money into it and uh, raise the value. And uh, he said no back in November. 
So here we are in February, trying to revisit this conversation. A few more months have gone by. He's done some more work. It's sat on the market. He's probably got offer after offer after offer, more in the $2.1 million range. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I can help him. I can give him more money if he'll work with me, but he just wants a traditional offer at $2.6 million minimum. But to get a somewhat decent return, I think we've got to be at 2.1 or below, honestly. Um, <laughs> talking with the lender, you know, we were just running through scenarios, and he said, would you guys consider putting 50% down? Interest rate would be 6%. So I'd write it up and everything and just on the phone with him, running stuff in the calculator, and it'd be a 4% cash on cash return if we came out of pocket $1.3 million. I just, I I couldn't make sense of that. He laughed when I told him, you know, uh, a, a deal like that in that area, making us 4% on our money um, was a pretty funny idea to that lender. So we'll see. I'm, I, I'm really just racking my brain trying to figure out how I can make it work. You know, it would help the seller out a lot if he would, you know, kind of take what I've proposed, and it's going to get him, you know, I think five hundred thousand more dollars than the other options. But uh, that's just the the name of the game, kind of dealing with uh, what's going on. I'm getting a phone call here. I'll call him back. Um, but man, today was great, very productive. I feel like uh, we're going to get some stuff going, some traction just revisiting conversations and following up that's the name of the game nothing really happens super quickly especially in commercial real estate but if i've been talking to someone over six months and the property still hasn't sold and we're providing a solution to their issues it's just not quite what they want now six months later life could change some more pain could set in on whatever their motivator is for selling so you just got to keep following up, add more to the pipeline and keep following up. I've gotten really back into using our CRM HubSpot as it just keeps track of all the conversations, all the deals and create a note to follow up, create a task. It'll send me a notification on my phone like, hey, call this guy, check in on this offer that you made. Hey, due diligence ends on this day, you know, make sure we got everything going on this deal and uh, just create a system, add more to it and let it remind me to follow up. So it's fun. <laughs> well, we'll see what we get into. Oh, what you if you watch yesterday's episode, this is what you waiting to hear. I did get the money for the watch that I sent. So today is a good day. I feel a lot better about that. Um, kind of just put it in the mail and trusted the guy. He sent me a shipping label, and I shipped it off to New York City. But then he messaged me, hey, it came in. Here's your wiring instructions. Is, you know, is this all correct? And then he sent me the money, and it showed up in my account a few minutes later. So uh, that's where we're at with that. Um, heading home. It's Friday night. There's probably going to be a lot of traffic. Going to get some dinner. I think. Let's see if I can remember what we're having. She told me. I don't remember. It'll be a surprise. This may be the end of the video. May not be the end of the video. You can probably tell at the bottom if it is or not. See you at the next clip.